Hi, welcome to our Ask the Experts series where I'm talking to industry experts around the use of data and insight to drive better business and marketing decisions. Today I am joined by Joe Kitchen, Partnerships Director for Finecast, and we're going to be exploring the shifts in the TV advertising space. Hi Joe, uh, welcome. Thank you. Can you start off by telling us a little bit around Finecast, where it sits within WPP and then your role within there? Yeah, sure. So, um, so Finecast is WPP's um, addressable TV platform. Um, and what that means is that um, we provide Group M's agencies and advertisers with a, a single source point of entry to the entire TV um, ecosystem. Um, predominantly, we're talking about um, you know, TV content that is um, distributed via IP and by, via the internet. Overlaying across um, that content is a whole range of addressable, uh, relevant audiences. Um, and we do that through our proprietary tech and um, our um, best-in-class data providers, uh, which Experian is, is obviously one of them. My role is, as, as Partnerships Director is to work with, um, with these data providers to create you know, the, the segments that make sense for TV and for our, for our advertisers. That sounds like a really interesting role, Joe. From your perspective then, what is changing within the TV advertising space at the moment? The changes are predominantly led by you know, the consumer and the way they're watching and where they're watching. And as, as we've kind of alluded to, there's a lot more content that's kind of coming into the market now and, and in different kind of ways. So that means there's more platforms for us to um, activate across. But then the other side of that is the available data sets that are available to use. You know, that's why we, we, we work with a whole range of um, top class data providers to provide um, really relevant audiences um, for specific campaigns. That's really the, the, the main changes that, that we're seeing, but we expect to see you know, uh, that fragmentation of content and platforms um, continue. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that's one of like kind of Finecast mantra is to, to harness the power of that fragmentation to make sure that um, advertisers can do TV advertising in many different ways. So you mentioned content a couple of times there. How do we define TV advertising content now? Yeah, so that's a really good question because as we've seen new, new players come into the market, so the nights of Netflix and the night, likes of Disney, that's shifted a little bit on what the kind of TV content can be because it, it might not just be you know, your, your, your linear scheduled programming, it's more kind of on-demand viewing. You'll actually probably see slight variations between demographics and cohorts around what they define TV content as. So that's, okay. that's a really kind of interesting question right now. Um, but predominantly, I think right now, we, you know, it, 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 it's about making sure that the quality of TV content you know, is, is still paramount and so you know, when we, when we do define it, it's, you know, long form, quality produced, uh, professionally produced content. Okay, so we've spoken about tech and content. From a consumer perspective, what are the benefits from that? There's much more benefits as a TV consumer these days um, from, a, from a viewing perspective. And obviously, you know, they can consume media on their own terms a lot more now. From a consumer perspective, this ability that, to bring kind of more addressable advertising um, means ultimately they're going to see much more relevant, much more useful um, ads that will benefit their life. I think that's, that's key, isn't it, in terms of um, innovation. It really is kind of focused around the consumer as well. One of the big industry areas at this moment in time is around privacy, consumer privacy. Mm. How do you uh, face into that at Finecast? Yeah, so um, with any kind of data provider that we, we, we work with, there must be a, a, a really strict kind of data privacy protocol. And that's, um, that's a, a fairly lengthy procedure to make sure that you know, any data that's being used or any provider that is being worked with is wholly GDPR compliant. So that's kind of a, a first step. In terms of, I guess, more 
uh, focused in how that looks within addressable TV world. It's around kind of finding the right keys um, to, to, to basically build audience in a, in a privacy compliant way. Um, and so we work, with, we, we work with our data providers where we can look at audiences at a geo level. Um, and typically that's uh, one of the, like, the most consistent um, kind of keys that you see is uh, postcodes. Um, and the beauty of what we do at Finecast is we go down to a postcode unit level, mm -hmm. which typically, I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of range, but the average postcode unit is 15 households. Okay. Um, so you're still getting a, a, you know, a, a pretty granular look of, of an audience, but still within all kind of privacy compliant um, regulations. Thanks, and I think that, that really is a, a key point. How does all the shifts that you're experiencing at the moment actually impact how you're dealing and supporting clients? So what you've been asked for that is different than you have been previously? Depends on the brands that you're talking to, but ultimately each brand will have a specific type of audience, you know, and, and that goes much deeper than what we can tr traditionally do on you know, linear TV advertising, which is kind of broad demographic. So we're able to provide a, a planning framework for these um, for these brands to plan against a specific audience. Um, then through the use of our data providers, um, we can kind of build a multi-dimensional audience that meets those needs and ultimately activate that and then measure that effectiveness that goes beyond reach. So you can obviously look at how, how, how many of those that audience you've reached, but you can also look at what actual um, impact that's had. So has there been any brand lift? Has there been any, I guess, digital kind of engagement off that or even as far as down as sales? OK, so really that that whole kind of piece wrapping around straight into measurement as well. So again, people can be very focused around where their marketing spend is working for them and where it's not working for them. Thanks, Joe, for joining me. I really appreciate the time that we spent together today. Thanks for having me in.